Just yesterday, we found out that R.R. Donnelly & Sons, simple RRD, an amalgam of different businesses that's generally thought of as the world's top commercial printing company, is breaking itself up in a move that I think makes a ton of sense. Now, you know I've been a fan of this company for some time, in part because it's the most trusted name when it comes to preparing financial statements for publicly traded companies. But if you watched this show last night, you know I love the idea that R.R. Donnelly is splitting itself up into three different independent companies that are easy to understand. One's a financial communications and data services company. Then there's a multi-channel communications management business. Don't worry, we're going to go into all what these mean. And then one that's obvious that you probably know, printing business for magazines and catalogs. Rather than being one very complicated company that I think is hard to get your head around, R. Donnelly's breaking itself up into three relatively straightforward companies by the end of 2016. I think this move could create a lot of value. Oh, and let's not forget that R. Donnelly also reported a solid quarter yesterday, $0.04 cent beat off a $0.37 cent basis. Uh, excellent cash flow uh, growth. Although the company said demand softened with an organic revenue decline of more than 2%. So let's take a closer look at this transformation with Tom Quinlan. He's the president and CEO of R.R. Donnelly and says to learn more about what's going to happen with this impending breakup. Mr. Quinlan, welcome back to Man Money. Good Thank to see you, you sir. Thank Have you, a Jim. seat. Thank Before we even get started, you said the dividend is safe and going to be declared. So don't worry for those who want income, right? That is correct. We, we know how important the dividend is. And for as far as we can see for the next year, we're going to continue to recommend to the board 26 cents per share. Per quarter. All right. Just want to get the biggest. I know I've told people this is you have great cash flow. Now, you got three different divisions that I had always felt uh, didn't make a lot of sense together. But you had made a compelling case in the multiple times you've been on that yet you liked all these levers. So why now? Um, why now is because customer dynamics are changing and the industry is changing and we've got the scale. So we, we've got a position of strength with the acquisitions that we've done over the years, and we wanted to be an integrated communication services mm -hmm. provider. Right. Uh, the acquisitions that we've done have gotten us there. When we acquired Consolidated Graphics, it helped uh, the communications channel. When we received uh, Courier, it helped the PRS company. Uh, Bound and Edgar Online for financial. So we've got the technology, we've got the scale, uh, and we've got the people and the customers to go ahead and break them out. No, I, I think that there are people who said, well, wait a second, the... Uh the organic growth isn't there. So what they're doing is they're just breaking it up in order to be able to mask whatever's the problem and that the margins aren't that good and that this is not a good time. So walk us through why maybe these businesses are troughing and you want to be in them. Yeah, sure. I mean, we came out yesterday and we uh, actually increased our margins guidance for the back half of the year. Top line is challenged. Right. Uh, but at the same time, I think that's where we add benefit. Customers are looking to go ahead and take out cost. I would tell you that most of the earnings that came out uh, this particular quarter, I wouldn't say that many people had a really robust top line growth. So I don't think we're unusual from that. Uh, May consumer spending was, I think, 0.4%. June it was flat. Right. These businesses for us, the, the perfect thing about them is we look to save our customers money and improve their return. And I think when you look at these businesses, all three of them are leaders in their particular category. Now, but also, I want you to explain to people, two of these are what I consider secular growth companies. They're not cyclical companies, and people might want to hold on to all parts of these. So uh, customized multi-channel communications and publishing uh, and the uh, financial communication services, to me, if I were at a standalone there, I'd be saying it could be uh, as much as double-digit growth. Yeah, and when you think about financial co, when you think about the uh, workflow, workflow tools that we have right. and the content management tools that we have, the data archiving, the retrieval that we have, uh, those companies that are out there doing that today, their multiple is probably two times what our multiple is, is R.R. Donnelly. So we think by them being separated, they'll be able to have that growth. Regulatory uh, issues are not going away. Okay. Financial transactions aren't going away. That business is going to grow. When you think about the communications aspect, the supply chain for the Fortune 1000, as it relates, is inefficient. Of which you have like a huge number of the companies do Correct. It Right. We, we have 95%, I believe, of the Fortune 1000. So uh, as you think of that, we ha we're, we're with the customers that are growing. We're with the customers that are doing acquisitions. They need to go ahead and find ways, again, for them to do it more efficiently. There's so many ways for companies now to reach out to their customers. Mm -hmm. We want to be the ones that are doing that, and we want to make it easy for them. So when they think about their communication piece, they just think of us and come to us to have them help them do well, that. What I tried to do, and I do on all the breakups, is try to figure out enterprise value of each division. I, I, using the sales, say, for the uh, publishing retail centric, I've got 35, you know, 3.5 uh, billion. I have an enterprise value of that one, I think, of, of one, you know, let's say of 1,000, uh, 1.7. Uh, the finance, 2.2. Uh, this, the customized multi-channel, I, I can get to 5.2 because of the growth. This gives you, I can come up to a 69% increase in value of the stock 
without really doing anything other than measuring how other companies in these businesses are doing right now. No, and then look, the whole idea behind us doing this was to unlock the value. We think we're good now. We need to shrink in order to grow. Right. And that's the, uh, the reason why behind we decided to go ahead right now. The, our, our, we're really from a position of strength as you think about financial, strategic, and operational. And John Whitehead once told me when you want to do anything, any major change, make sure you do it from a position of strength. Oh, he's by old boss at Goldman Sachs. One, one last question. Um, Quad, this is a, pu a rival publisher, had really bad numbers today. Are, is that the kind of company that if you got together with them, it, you could make something more happen? Or are they just, just not a player and you're wiping them out? I, uh, don't comment on acquisitions right. or M&A category. My general counsel will, will not be happy with me. But what I would tell you is... Uh, look, you need a willing buyer and a willing seller, right. and right. we'd go from there. Okay, excellent. That's Tom Quinlan, the president and CEO of R.R. Donnelly & Sons, who never stops trying to put money in your pocket. I love this transaction. Got a while, and you're being paid to wait while you do. May have money's back in. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.